Modern monetary theory, economic utopia or economic catastrophe? I'm going to explain it all to you in three simple, fast steps. Step number one, how does it work right now? The government takes money, they spend it into the system. The government workers take their money, they deposit that into the banks through fractional reserve banking that increases the money supply. That money goes out to the people, just like you and I, through loans, and that goes into the economy, produces demand and production. So how does the government actually get the money that they spend? Well, first and foremost, they tax it from you and I. So they go to all these people and say, hey, we want our share, pay your fair share, people. And the people take their money and they give it some of it back to the government. That goes into the government coffer so they can go ahead and spend it out again in the future. If they're running a little low on money, then they have to go to the bond market and they have to borrow some money. They say, oh my gosh, we're not getting enough money in taxes and we're spending, spending like a drunk sailor. So we got to go into the bond market and borrow some more money to fill up that coffer again. There's another piece of the puzzle. We have this many dollars circulating throughout our economy right now. And let's say those dollars are circulating at a rate or velocity of five. If we increase the amount of dollars that are in circulation and the velocity stays the same or increases and we don't have the same amount of goods and services that are increasing with the rate of money, then we're going to get inflation because we have more money chasing the same amount of goods and services. Let's keep in mind that the banks have a lot of control over how much money is in the system because they're the ones that issue the credit. So the more credit they issue, the more money that's in the system. Well, the Fed has a way, a couple ways, of managing the money supply. Since a lot of the money supply is determined by the banks, the Fed can come in and if they want to decrease the rate of inflation, they can increase interest rates. If they increase interest rates, that means the banks are going to lend less. That means less money that's circulating in the economy. That means lower inflation. If they want to raise inflation, they just do the opposite. They lower interest rates. That makes it easier for banks to lend. If it's easier for the banks to lend, then there's more money going to the people, more money going into the economy, circulating at the same rate, that increases the rate of inflation. There's one more way that they can do that. As we know, the Fed prints money out of nowhere, just digits on a computer. So if they want to increase the money supply, if they want to stoke inflation, they can also take that newly printed money and go into the bond market and buy bonds. The person who sells them those bonds is going to take that newly printed money and they're going to deposit it into the bank. That means there's more money through the banking system that they can go ahead and lend that increases the money supply and stokes inflation, theoretically. They can do the opposite. They can go into the bond market and they can sell their bonds. And that means this person has to take money from their bank account or out of the banking system and give it to the Fed to buy those bonds. And then the Fed basically incinerates the money. So there are two key takeaways from step number one. First is the government can spend money without the Fed having to print new money. So let's say that this is the amount of money or this is the government's coffer right here. And they've got money in there from taxes, which is blue, existing money that they get from the bond market, that's green, and new additional money that they get from potentially the Fed printing more money in buying those bonds that the government is issuing. So again, we've got three forms of money that the government can spend. Money that they get from taxes, existing money from the money supply, and new money that's printed by the Fed. It's very key that you understand this for the next two steps. The second key takeaway for step number one is the red and blue arrows. Why did I do that? I've got the red arrows. That's money coming from the government that the government is spending. And all the blue arrows are money that we are spending. The individuals in the economy, the entrepreneurs, the consumers, the workers, that's the money that we are spending. This blue money is spent productively. The red money is spent 
unproductively. So what happens when this red money comes into the system, it turns into blue money, but then the government takes out that blue money to spend more red money. So that, in, in other words, the government takes money out of the productive sector to spend money unproductively. Step number two, how does modern monetary theory actually work? We've got the government right here. They spend money into the system. That goes to the government workers. They deposit that money into the banks. The banks lend that out through fractional reserve banking. So the money supply increases. That goes to the people who borrow the money. They go and they spend that into the economy through demand and production. Whoa, 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 George. Time out. That sounds exactly like the old system. <laughs> You're right. It is. Here's the difference. Now we don't have a Federal Reserve and we don't have a bond market. The government, if they've got to pay their bills, all they do is just go over to the computer and go pop, 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 and they deposit money into the accounts of the people that they need to pay. Simple. You may be asking yourself, well, George, wouldn't that create inflation? If we have all these bureaucrats just sitting there in Washington, D.C. and typing numbers into a computer to pay people, that's just money out of thin air. Well, that's going to be hyperinflation. And the banks, at the end of the day, have a lot of control over how much money is going into that system through the issuance of credit. But the MMT people have a solution for that, or a uh, let's call it a solution with, with air quotes. What they would do to reduce the money supply, because now we don't have a Federal Reserve that can raise interest rates to lower the amount of money in the system, or they can't sell bonds because there is no more bond market. So the MMT folks would come in here and they would just simply raise taxes because a tax is money that's coming out of the system and going into the government. And they just incinerate the money that lowers the money supply that theoretically reduces inflation. Oh, but wait, there is more. The critical component to the MMT game plan is the jobs guarantee. Sounds amazing, doesn't it? We've got a group of people in our society that are unemployed. The MMT folks call them damaged goods. And trust me, those are their words. Those, those aren't my words. We've got this group of people that are unemployed. And it consists of maybe some guys who are mentally ill. This guy looks pretty crazy. This guy who's had a few too many beers last night. And then this person who's perfectly capable of working. So the MMT people look at this group and say, well, they could be productive. This is a waste of human capital. So we're going to put them to work by printing all of this money so they can produce more stuff. And let's remember that inflation is not just about the money supply and the velocity, but it's also about the amount of stuff that is being produced by our economy. And if the amount of stuff that we produce increases at the same rate as the money supply, then we are most likely not going to have inflation. The added benefit to this is not only are we employing everyone so they have money to spend, but we're also taking the damaged goods and having them build bridges, high speed rail. Maybe they're building solar farms. Uh, or maybe wind farms. I'm not sure if solar farms are the thing, but wind farms. So through the government's infinite wisdom and management skills, they're going to take the unemployed and with money printing, that's what's going to propel our economy into the future. It's going to completely eradicate poverty and we're never going to have to worry about inflation. There's a key takeaway for step number two. Remember in step number one, we had the composition of the money that the government actually spends. That was blue, those were the taxes, green was existing money, and black was potentially new money that the Federal Reserve would print out of thin air. In the MMT model, you only have two forms of money. You have taxes and you have new money. So there would be a gap that would be left because we wouldn't have any more of this green money. That gap could only be filled with additional taxes or additional new money. This is key, and I want you to really focus on this 
for the next step, step number three, where I outline the numerous problems with MMT. Step number three, modern monetary theory problems. The United States is here, and in this example, we've got this much money that's circulating within the system. But you've got to remember that there are trillions and trillions of dollars outside of the United States that's trading back and forth between all these countries because we have the reserve currency status. A lot of times we call these euro dollars. But if we didn't have a bond market anymore, it would be almost impossible for the United States to retain the reserve currency. If we don't have the reserve currency anymore, then these people have no reason to hold dollars. So all those dollars come flooding back into the system, which increases the money supply exponentially. And let's remember that the MMT people only have two tools to control the amount of money or the supply of money. And they only have one tool to reduce the amount of money, and that is taxation. So the only thing that the US government could do to combat all this hot money that was coming into the economy would be to increase tax rates to absurd levels. And when I mean absurd, I mean 80 or 90%, not just on the rich, but the middle class, people just like you. And remember that by taking taxes out of the private sector, we are reducing productivity. So they would crush the economy while at the same time, most likely getting hyperinflation. The next problem with MMT is that it diverts resources out of the private sector. If you guys watch my videos, you know that one of the keys to a productive economy is that it allocates scarce resources with alternative uses very well. As an example, we've got the private sector here, the government here. In the middle, we have our scarce resources. Let's use steel and copper. So the government would take some of this steel and copper from the private sector and allocate it up to the unemployed people that they have building the bridges, the high-speed rail, and the solar farm. But they need to do this more efficiently than the private sector. Why do I say that? Because even the MMT people will admit to keep up with the rate of the amount of money that they want to print, we would have to produce a lot more goods and services. So the government, if they're extracting those resources, would have to utilize them better to make sure that the productivity was expanding at the same rate as the money supply. So we're expecting the government to be extremely efficient. The problem is that the government is one of the most inefficient entities that we have ever seen. We all know that very well. How would you like the post office managing all of these unemployed people trying to build a bridge that you drive over every day going back and forth to work. So what happens if we have less productivity, which is what I think would happen. If we have less productivity and we're increasing the money supply, that means a greater amount of money chasing a fewer amount of goods and services. That's basically what happened in Venezuela. The next problem is that MMT requires people to behave as robots. The critical components of MMT is that they're able to raise taxes at will, and people will still pay them, and that the Jobs Guarantee Program produces a tremendous amount of productivity in the economy. But let's think this through. If we go back to the 1950s and look at the highest marginal tax rates, we see that it's ranged from 90%, 25%, to maybe 39% that we've had now. And if you compare that to the amount of revenue that's actually generated by the tax receipts, you'll see that if you compare that to GDP, regardless of the highest marginal rate, it's always around 18%. And I know I've blown some people's minds with that, but check it out as soon as you get done with this video. It is true that regardless of the highest marginal rate, you still get about the same amount of money in tax revenue. Why is that? Because once you raise the taxes to a certain rate, people aren't robots. They're just flat out not going to pay it. Moving over to the Jobs Guarantee Program, it requires all these people to be extremely productive and it requires the government to be very efficient. So let's just assume 
that the government is efficient for a moment, and I know it's a, that's a big leap, but let's just assume that they're efficient. They've got to work with these people that, I mean, a lot of them are going to be great, awesome people. They're going to be very productive, but a lot of them are also going to be mentally ill. They're going to be, have drug and alcohol issues. And just being honest and calling a spade a spade, a lot of them are just going to be flat out lazy. And the bottom line is they're not like a computer game where you can just take a controller and move them over to the left and have them go up and build this bridge. It's just not going to happen. So if you're not getting that productivity and people aren't just going to pay whatever tax rate you want them to pay, this whole system just implodes in on itself. What it boils down to when you get rid of all the useless complexity and jargon is that modern monetary theory is actually not really modern and it's not really a theory. What they really want is just expanded government and higher taxes. It's just like Elizabeth Warren, Bernie Sanders, and AOC without the bond market. For more information like this, check out this content right here, and I will see you on the next video.